I've arrived in Blaenafestiniog, once the capital of the slate industry in Wales. At the beginning of the 19th century, Festiniog was a small poor village with a few isolated farmsteads, and sheep were as important as slate to the early pioneers. Slate eventually became the basis of the wealth in Snowdonia, and Blino Festiniog became the centre of the industry. The industry prospered, and Blino became the town that roofed the world. The town is set in an elevated natural bowl between the Manald and Moylwyn mountains of Snowdonia. Despite being geographically in the centre of the Snowdonia National Park, the grey slate waste tips that surround the town prevented it from being officially included in the National Park. Today, Blina has to some extent reinvented itself as a tourist destination, with two quarries offering trips into the massive underground caverns built by the slate workers. The narrow gauge Festiniog Railway links Blina with Porth Maddock on the coast. Originally horse drawn, the Festiniog Railway opened for freight traffic in 1836 and transported the slate from source at Blana Festiniog to harbour via a 13 mile journey through meadows, woodlands, lakes, and waterfalls within what is now the Snowdonia National Park. The ride is spectacular as the line twists and turns its way through the countryside. I really like Blana, and I think all the slate around it is what makes it look so spectacular. And it's really funny when you look at a map of Snowdonia, the National Park has a hole right in the middle of it, and inside that hole is where Blana is. I soon moved on from Blina and entered the National Park to start my walk. From Redisan, I followed a woodland path beside the Avon Dewey Rid, passing several small waterfalls. became quite steep as it led me into the Coid Cumrai National Nature Reserve. This is an area of oak woodland, probably a remnant of the vast woodlands that used to cover much of North Wales. As I continued climbing, the path soon exited the woods, giving way to more open country.
Well, it's really warm now, the sun's out, so I'm going to take a chance and take my coat off, which hopefully I won't need for the rest of today's walk. At the top, I eventually reached the line of the Festiniog Railway as I approached Diach Station. My timing couldn't have been more perfect as a steam train passed through the station at the very moment I arrived. The track originally went straight ahead at the Alcht, to Moylwyn Tunnel, but the track beyond the tunnel was submerged when the Festiniog Hydroelectric Power Station opened in 1957. The rebuilt track had to pass the lake at a higher level, and to gain sufficient height, a spiral was built at Dialt, which takes the narrow gauge track over itself. Before continuing on, I took a short detour to a viewpoint in the centre of the spiral. From the station, I crossed the line to follow a path parallel to the railway. This part of the walk, the views of the Vale of Festiniog and surrounding mountains are superb. After a while, the path dropped down from the railway line and slowly descended through woodlands. This is a really scenic walk. But aside from that, there's something else which I find really fascinating about it. Something I've noticed as I've been walking along today. I'm used to footpaths being way marked with some sort of arrow or a post or some kind of marker, signpost, anything. But this is constantly marked with yellow tape. <laughs> now that's a first. At least you know where you're going. It was indeed a bizarre sight. As I continued my descent, I found the yellow tape not only stuck to wooden posts, but to tree branches, loose pieces of rock, and even blades of grass. Right, 
Well, I basically double back now towards where I parked my car. So I just follow this lane for about a mile and a half. This quiet, attractive lane took me on a pleasant stroll beside the Avon Dewey Rid. I'm staying in Porth Maddock nearby, in the Travel Lodge. Now the Travel Lodge is just on the outskirts of the town, right at the back of an industrial estate. But when I got up this morning, I thought, I'll have a walk into town and see if I can find a cafe for breakfast. Now, I noticed there's a sign just outside the Travel Lodge saying, breakfasts, less than a two minute walk away. And I thought, that's intriguing because the signpost was directing you right in the middle of the industrial estate. So I thought, well, why would they have a cafe in the middle of an industrial estate? So anyway, I followed the sign and I found this place that said breakfasts and it was very keen on saying, nothing is too much trouble. And I walked inside and it was excellent. It really was. I was expecting a greasy spoon cafe because I suppose this cafe would rely on not passing trade, but on people who work in the other industrial units, as well as people that are staying in the travel lodge. But it was clean, tidy, and certainly wasn't a greasy spoon calf. And I got a very good breakfast at a reasonable price. So it really was excellent. And I've since seen that if you look on TripAdvisor, there are good reviews constantly, and saying that it's one of the best, if not the best, place to go for breakfast in Porth Manoch. As I say, it's not the first place you would think of looking in the middle of industrial estate for a cafe. But the fact is, it obviously does very well. And I have to say, it was excellent. So I shall be going there again tomorrow morning, I think. As I passed that house just back there, two dogs ran out barking at me. Frightened me to death initially, but I just carried on walking and they carried on barking at me, but they stopped as I walked past their house, so no harm done. But as I got further along the lane, I heard them barking again. They were absolutely going mad. And I looked round and I could see that a Royal Mail van had pulled outside the house and the postwoman that was delivering the mail was obviously getting barked at like I did. But they were going like the clappers, they really were going mad. So anyway, I just carried on walking on the lane and then the, the van passed me and the lady just sort of stopped and spoke to me and she said, I have to deal with this every day, she said. <laughs> and I said, well, I suppose you must get used to it. And she said, well, what I do now is I drive my van slower along the lane and that drives the dogs mad. She says they really hate that. If I was to drive faster, they wouldn't be so bad, but because I slow down, they absolutely hate it, so I do it deliberately every day just to annoy them, she said. <laughs> Love it, I really do. eventually ended at the main road, where I had to cross at rather a dangerous junction before taking another path leading me uphill again.
I've nearly finished my walk now. I've just got to walk down through this field and it meets the road where my car's parked. I'm just going to go back to Porth Maddock then, where I'm staying anyway, but I'll have a little look around the town just to see the other end of the Vestiniog Railway. Arriving back at my car, I drove on to today's final destination. I entered Porth Maddock along the famous Cobb, built to form the deep harbour, from where great sailing ships carried around the world slate mined in Blynafestiniog. In this once great seaport, rich in maritime history and the terminus of the Festiniog Railway, Porth Maddock is ideally placed for visiting all of the main tourist attractions of Snowdonia. With all the splendour of Snowdonia as a backdrop, and a coastline with beaches second to none, you couldn't find a more attractive spot for a holiday. Porth Maddock is a bustling town, full of individual shops and places to eat. It has a strong and proud heritage, culture and community. The Welsh language is a key part of its identity, commonly spoken here, and its people, as I have discovered for myself, are particularly warm and friendly. So, that's my day in the Vale of Festiniog, and what a fantastic day it's been too. Well, now that I'm back here in Porth Maddock, I'm going to wander back to my travel lodge in a minute, put my feet up for a while, then I'll shower and get changed, and come back into town and have my evening meal here at Spooners behind me. I've been here for the last couple of nights, and I have to say the food is very good, so I may as well come here again tonight. A great way to spend my last night in Porth Maddock.